Have you ever wished you had a superpower? Raise your hand if you have. Nice. That's almost everyone. What if I told you that each and every one of us already has a superpower? A superpower that can save lives and that will contribute to saving our planet. I'm Leah. I'm a nutrition scientist. And I'm here today to show you how we can all have a positive impact. A positive impact on all beings of this planet. A positive impact on our own health. And a positive impact on the Earth that we all live on. I'm here to show you how to eat today to change tomorrow. But first, I want to share a little story with you. Imagine a young girl. She is about 10 years old, and she's on summer vacation with her family, visiting friends that live on a farm far into the beautiful French countryside. She is a city girl, and she's thrilled to be out in nature, you know, which she doesn't get that often in the city. And she's running around the fields and playing with all the animals. Her favorite ones are the chickens. They're so cute how they're running around with her all day and eating all the grains she feeds them. The farm owners are really excited about the guests and want to serve them the freshest food they can. So what do they do? They go to the garden, they grab some of the vegetables, and then they go and grab one of the chickens. And they kill it in front of everyone's eyes. The little girl is horrified by what she sees. Later, at the dinner table, even though she's really hungry, she refuses to eat the chicken soup that is being served. It isn't until that moment that for the first time in her life, she realizes what meat actually is. That those delicious looking pieces in the soup, only a few hours ago, actually had legs and were running around with her in the garden. You may be wondering, that little girl was me. And that was the moment I stopped eating meat. At 10 years old, it wasn't a rational decision. It was moral conviction. It was an inner voice that was telling me, I don't want to do harm to other living beings, neither human beings nor animal beings. It wasn't about a few years later that I actually came to realize that cutting out meat out of my diet isn't only good for our moral perspective, but also has a lot of benefits for our physical well-being and for the health of our planet. My academic career started in medical school. The medical campus was located on the hospital ground. So every morning when I walked to class, I was surrounded by sick people, by patients that are suffering from chronic diseases, such as cancer, diabetes, or cardiovascular diseases. About like two years into my studies, I began to question, why are all of these people sick? Why are they suffering from chronic diseases that didn't even exist like one lifetime ago? To find answers to all these questions, I started digging into the scientific literature and I read a lot of papers. And I found out that our nutrition is the single largest contributor to chronic diseases. There was one statistic that was published by the World Health Organization that really stuck with me. 80% of chronic diseases are preventable. 80%. And our nutrition is the single largest contributor to chronic diseases. That is the result of not just one study, but that is the result of thousands and thousands of studies that were conducted over the course of decades. For me, really understanding and internalizing like, these facts was enough to convince me that I wanted to leave med school and to become a nutrition scientist instead. While I was studying nutrition, I stumbled 
across the secret of longevity that was researched, that was published about blue zones. First, I had no idea what it was, but I dig dug a little deeper. Blue zones are regions in the world where people live a lot longer, and they also suffer from only a fraction of the chronic diseases that are killing the rest of the world. There has been a lot of data published on blue zones. And from all of that empirical data that has been collected, there have been three points identified that contribute to the blue zone inhabitants' longevity. And these factors are lifestyle, social setting, and nutrition, which is what we're going to focus on now. The average Western diet looks like that. It is very high in carbohydrates and processed food and meat and dairy products. So I mentioned blue zones. One of the most studied blue zones is Okinawa. That is an island in Japan. And the traditional diet in Okinawa looks like that. The largest part of their diet are fruit and vegetable. Less than 5% come from meat and fish. Unfortunately, as globalization progressed, the diet in Okinawa has also changed and no longer looks like it does here in the pyramid. But from the data that has been collected, we can draw very important conclusions. And those are that Okinawans had historically a higher lifespan, lower number of chronic diseases, and in correlation with that, a diet centered around fruits and vegetables. Today, we have a body of evidence of scientific research that is supporting diets that are similar to that of the Okinawans. Studies show that people who follow a plant-based diet have a 60% lower risk of diabetes, a 19% lower risk of cancer, and a 40% lower risk of cardiovascular diseases. So we've talked about the moral aspect of cutting out meat and the health benefits of it. If we bring these two together, we can see that following a plant-based diet does our moral campus justice and provides tremendous benefits for physical well-being. We can see that how we eat today affects our health tomorrow. But there is even more to it. What many people do not know is that the food we eat has a direct impact on the climate and thus on the future of our planet. Global warming is more than just a buzzword. It is happening in every country, on every continent, at every minute around the world. Despite a lot of governmental regulations, that are necessary to combat the negative side effects and the deconstruction that global warming brings along, the outlook of us reaching the agreed climate goals is still not very positive. But I believe that there's still hope. And that hope is at the end of our forks and on our plates. Our food system is the single largest contributor to global warming. Our food system is responsible for 30% of greenhouse gas emissions. 30%. According to the United Nations, half of that comes from animal farming. That is more than from the entire global transport system. In other words, animal farming produces more greenhouse gases than all cars, all boats, and all airplanes combined. That, my friends, is the incredible benefit that a plant-based diet can have. One thing I really want you to leave here today is realizing that we all have a superpower, that you and I have the superpower to decide, do we want other beings to suffer on our behalf, or do we want to live in harmony with them? Do we want to suffer from chronic diseases? Or do we want 
to prevent 80% of those chronic diseases and live a healthy, long life? Do we want our children and our children's children to grow up in a world where people fight over water and where only selected group of people or of nations have access to nutritious food? Or do we want them to grow up in a world where they can enjoy the beauty of a spring day in bloom, where they can listen to the bees humming, and if they're animal lovers like me, even play with the chickens in the garden? Which one do you prefer? Maybe you're thinking, OK, I get it. A plant-based diet is good. But how should I incorporate that into my life? My life is so busy, I barely find time to eat, let alone think about when and where to eat. Believe me, I hear you and I feel you. We have so many competing demands in our lives that having to think about our nutrition on top of all of that can be overwhelming. And that is why I'm not advocating that you do a radical shift and cut out meat out of your diet as of today. There are different shades of green, and any step you take towards a little greener is a step in the right direction. There is a concept that I personally really like. It is called OMD, and it is what is invented or described by the environmental activist Susie Cameron. OMD stands for one plant-based meal a day. One meal a day. I personally love that concept because it is simple, it is practical, and it's literally doable for everyone. One plant-based meal a day. That could mean replacing the milk in your morning cereal with oat milk or some other plant-based alternative. Or it could mean replacing that chicken salad or that chicken soup with a healthy, delicious vegetable alternative. Maybe you're thinking now, OK, one plant-based meal a day, I could do that. But what impact is that possibly going to have? What is that going to change? The answer is a lot. Projections show that if you, if one person for one year replaces one meat or dairy-containing meal a day with a plant-based alternative, they will save 740,000 liters of water. That is about 10,000 showers. And they will also save greenhouse gas emissions that are equivalent to driving 1,500 kilometers with a car. That is like driving from Berlin through Frankfurt, of course, and all the way to Rome in Italy. That, my friends, is the impact that one single individual can have. Now imagine what would happen if we all take this first step towards a plant-based diet. It is one meal a day. That means it is one small shift in our own mindset. It is one small shift in our own behavior. I talked in the beginning about having a superpower. It is one small shift that we can all do that will make big change happen. If we all take this first step towards a plant-based diet, how we eat today will change tomorrow.